What's up YouTube, what's going on guys? Uh, real quick video, I wanted to talk about my bracing sequence, uh, specifically for the deadlift, which is a little bit different than the sequence I use for a squat. And um, so, so this bracing sequence I do, I think it's good for a lot of people. I might even say most people, but not everyone. Everyone's a little bit different. Um, people deal with different postural issues and imbalances in their movement patterns. And therefore the way you might move and set up is gonna be different from person to person. There are some universal cues that I think everyone can abide by that would help them out. But um, there's also some differences. So for me personally, when I set up on a, a conventional pole, uh, I am a conventional puller, I like to really focus on bracing my entire torso in a very neutral, uh, rigid position. So for me, I deal with a lot of overextension. I'm basically like Donald Duck all the time. My ass is out like this. I have so much back activation in my movement patterns. I'm really posterior dominant. So I kind of walk around like this all day. And to get out of that, when I set up for my deadlift so I don't pull overextended, I really like to get my feet set how I normally do. That's a video for another time. Today we're just talking about bracing. The first thing I do is very similar to how I did my squat bracing sequence in the other video. What I do is I first squeeze my glutes and kind of lock the knees. From there, I, I like to breathe out and bring my rib cage down. So you can see here, I'm already standing kind of overextended even with my glute squeeze. I like to breathe out. And you can see that that brings that rib cage down and it puts me in this nice neutral position throughout my back. So when I glute squeeze, here's my back normally. When I glute squeeze, the lumbar comes out of extension. So I go from being overextended, glute squeeze gets that lumbar out of extension, but now I gotta think about the, uh, the upper back. And so when I'm on here and I'm trying to get that T-spine, that thoracic region of my back out of extension too, I breathe out to bring the rib cage down. So glute squeeze, Breathe out, and then from there, once all my breath is exhaled, my abs are squeezed on and everything like that, I breathe into this position and brace this. And that's when my stomach puffs out, I get air in my chest and my stomach, and I fill the entire cavity out with pressure, and that really lets me pull in the most neutral and braced and rigid position. Now, certain athletes that tend to be more kyphotic, they're kind of walking around like this, especially guys on desks all day, uh, or people are a lot more interior dominant, they might actually do better keeping their chest open and high, especially if they're a sumo puller. So this isn't the only way to, to brace. It's just the way I do, and if you have some of the similarities that I do, you might find this works out for you. There's really no way to tell either until you try. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my actual pull now. You can watch the bracing sequence in motion. Glute squeeze. Breathe out, then I'm gonna brace all this. So I'm gonna show it again from the side and show you my back position. I'm doing these uh, poles beltless. This is set at about 74% of my max, which for a beltless pole is relatively difficult. And my biggest issue when I pull is actually back rounding. Now, back rounding in a deadlift is a very confusing topic. It can come from a lot of things. People think it's always from a weak low back and that's not really the case. I have videos on that explaining it. It actually comes sometimes from having too strong of a lower back and you have imbalances in your glutes, quads or wherever else, depending on what movement pattern it is. And in my case, my low back takes too much of the tension and when that happens it starts rounding over because it's trying to do too much work and I'm not getting my glutes involved. Something I did to fix that over the years was really work on my setup and my bracing to keep this all rigid and to make sure my glutes stay in, in, involved in the movement pattern and can actually contribute to uh, force production. So I'm going to get lined up on this. I'm going to do the bracing sequence again. Now something you want to notice is after the bracing sequence, I aggressively jam my arms down. People always ask why I do that. I'm trying to get my lats to engage and I'm trying to get the shoulder griddle into depression. And that lets me stand a little bit taller, help maintain that posture I achieved from the bracing sequence, and then I pull. And you'll see here, even on a beltless pole and a relatively heavy weight for myself, uh, my low back stays relatively neutral. And this is something I'm still fighting with. And one of the ways I conquer it again is through this bracing sequence. So let's get lined up. Glute squeeze, rib cage down, brace, and when I brace too, before I go, I fill up this entire section and my chest with air. I want pressure through the entire torso. So when I breathe in, I'm not just chest breathing, 
and raising all this up here and putting my back into extension again. I'm trying to fill all this out, including my stomach with air. Glute squeeze, ribcage down, 